Okay, I'd like to call to order the Tuesday, February 18th, 2020 Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Certification of compliance with the open meeting law. The board agenda was posted on the 14th of February at 345. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Thank you. Roll call. We got them all. There are 23 supervisors present. Jim is one. I would duly note they never cheered me when I did anything. They cheered you. <laughs> Thank you. Approval of the January 21st, 2020 journal. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Zigobar. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Zigobar. Any questions, comments? Seeing no lights, please push your iron or button. Uh, the journals approve unanimously. Thank you. Presentations. We have one from Aaron Brault, our Planning and Conservation Director on Amsterdam Dunes. Evening, Aaron. All right. Like John mentioned, uh, I was asked to talk a little bit about where we're at on some of the items at Amsterdam Dunes and the Sheboygan Marsh. Um, so I know Amsterdam Dunes is uh, the mitigation bank has been a long process, but I'm hopeful that uh, we are nearing the end. So I'll go through a few items there and, and talk through that. Let's see, where do I point? <laughs> Please. Next slide. <laughs> so. Um, so yeah, Amsterdam Dunes, I'll talk a little bit about the mitigation bank, or primarily the mitigation bank, and then the, uh, what's been going on in the non-mitigation bank portion of the property. If you recall, we have sort of two separate areas that we divided it up, uh, uh, essentially two parcels of that property. And then at the marsh, I'll talk a little bit about the bypass gate, the dam project, and then also the uh, potential building that the Friends of the Marsh are, are uh, fundraising for. Next slide. All right, so recent progress on Amsterdam Dunes. Uh, about last year this time, we submitted uh, what we were hoping was going to be our, our final banking instrument, is what they call it. Um, we weren't successful in that. Uh, however, based on past submittals in, in the draft documents, we'd get maybe 20, 15 comments back. The good news is that this last submittal, we only had four comments, and one of the comments was changing names. So. Uh, to the new people that are in roles at the U.S. Army Corps and DNR and, and places like that. So overall, it was uh, pretty exciting, at least for me. Um, the largest comment that we needed to, to address was uh, there were certain areas of the property where they wanted to have additional archaeological study. So when we first started the process, uh, similar to our Brownfields grant, we had to go through what was known as a phase one archaeological study. Um, so they walk the site, uh, you know, 
looked at the ground, seeing if they could find any, um, you know, shards or, or arrowheads or things like that that might have been there. And they look at uh, uh, historical documentation to see if there is any known uh, literature out there that stated that this may have been a, a Native American settlement or, or things like that. So um, there was a, a couple hits uh, in that phase one, and they wanted to have additional study, uh, which meant we had to do what's called a phase two archaeological study. So because of the... Um, mild weather that we've been having. We were able to complete that in December rather than having to wait till the spring, so that was good news. Um, we got that report delivered on the 31st of January, and uh, we've been working with our consultant now to uh, get those uh, other three additional comments uh, taken care of in our submittal and uh, add in the phase two archeological study. So we're hoping for what I hope is our final submittal um, this first or second week of March, and we'll see what happens. Next slide. So the, the study areas, I know this isn't the best map, but if you can see up in the top right here, the black areas were where we had to do the phase one archeological study uh, early on, and then these red areas are where they wanted additional study. And essentially what uh, you know, I described what they do in the phase one study. Uh, what, we, what they do in the phase two study is actually get out there and, and start uh, looking underneath that top six, eight inches of uh, farmed material that's been farmed over the years. So you take a backhoe out there and you slowly take a couple inches off at each time and, and they look at uh, what might be underneath there. Next slide. So some of the findings, I thought one of the coolest things was once they stripped off that six, eight inches, there were certain areas where you could see where they had fires. So there was staining in the ground where they may have had a, a camp area and, and had fires. Overall, uh, the good news as far as our mitigation bank was they didn't find much material. Um, so we're, we don't have to switch our plans or, or revise our plans. So that was the good news. They did find some shards and, and um, uh, small material. And most of it was centimeters in, in, uh, in length. Um, all told in the I think we had 14 or 15 pits that were dug. They found about a quarter pound of, of that clay pottery material. So uh, in their eyes, it, it wasn't very significant. Um, so that, again, that was good news for our mitigation bank. The other good news, when we were digging pits, I don't know if you can see here, we found a lot of water. So that's, that's good as far as restoring wetlands. So next slide. So where does that leave us uh, for this upcoming submittal? Uh, we'll have about 31.9 credits. Uh, one of the other comments of those four comments was in our, um, we have restoration areas, enhancement areas, and then creation areas. And in an enhancement, and all those are worth different ratios. So if you're restoring, you get a one-to-one -one credit. On enhancement, it's a negotiation. On uh, creation, it typically is a half a credit to uh, one, so a 0.5 to one ratio. We were pushing our enhancement in previous submittals. We were going for 0.75, then we dropped it to 0.7, and they essentially came out and said, unless you drop it to 0.5, you're not gonna get approval. So we lost five credits uh, in our enhancement areas. And enhancement areas are our existing wetlands, and essentially you're going in and, and taking care of invasive species, drainage issues that may be there, things like that. So 31.9 credits. Uh, credits are currently going on the market for about 80 to 100,000. And that depends on what type of uh, credit you have to buy. If you're buying a forested wetland credit, if you're destroying a forested wetland, those are worth more. Um, if you're looking at like a sedge meadow or something like that, those are worth less. Next slide. So what does that mean for us? If we conservatively say 70,000 a credit, that's about 2.2. Uh, using our 31.9 credits, uh, the current estimates for moving dirt, breaking tile, seeding and everything like that is at about 720,000. So that's a difference of about one and a half. Um, but that depends on how we determine how we want to sell our credits too. When we started this early on, you know, we talked about maybe selling it to local units of government for less than we would to the private sector. So that's one of my performance evaluation goals is to present to you guys a, a policy on that. 
Um, so we'll be working through that this year. So that number could change uh, a little bit based on what we come up with there. Next slide. So next steps in uh, our hopeful timeline, like I mentioned, uh, we're looking to submit that proposal early March. Uh, based on past precedent, I'm guessing summer is when we'll hear back from them and, and hopefully we have approval, um, which if that all works out would be good for a fall uh, construction timeline because you don't really want to plant in, in summer when things are hot. Uh, so fall planting or spring planting tend to be where you get your most success. So, uh, and like I said, uh, one of my goals for this year is to present to uh, Adam and, and you guys a, a policy on how we're going to look at, at credit sales. Next slide. Other notes, just quickly, if you recall, our acquisition costs have been fully accounted for, uh, either between state stewardship grant, uh, the settlement with Tecumseh, we're still getting payments on that, and then we were able to sell lot three, if you recall, and lot three is what put us into the, the black in that regard. Uh, once the bank is approved, uh, we can sell 10% of the credit, so if we end up with that 31.9, we'll be able to sell about three, three and a half credits. Um, the Amsterdam Dunes Advisory Committee, we still continue to meet uh, every so often with that committee, probably two or three times a year. Um, and they've been providing input on, on certain items uh, in regards to our non-mitigation bank um, restoration efforts. And then one of the, if you haven't been down there lately, I take a ride, there's no beach left. So we compared the air photos from this point here, and this is at the boat landing looking north uh, towards Amsterdam Park. In 2014, there was about 185 feet more beach than what exists as of about two weeks ago when this parent picture was taken. So pretty significant. Next slide. Uh, Non-mitigation, we've been uh, pushing forward on the restoration efforts in the non-mitigation bank portion of the, the property, and this is sort of how I keep things straight. I map it out and color code it, but we've been successful in getting a number of grants in that regard. Probably the two largest were the U.S. Forestry Service grants. Uh, so this past spring, we planted about, I think, 4,200 trees. And uh, this spring, we'll be planting about another 3,500. And that's primarily in the areas where we logged ash last year. So there's certain stands of forest in, in the, on the site that are between 80 and 90% ash. So that's going to be dead, as you guys know, um, pretty soon. Uh, so we were able to log last year while, while some of that timber still had value. Um, and these forest grants are where we're replacing um, trees because of the ash. Next slide. And then, yeah, just some pictures on the ash. So some of the forested areas, like I said, greater than 80% ash. We logged a couple areas in 19, and then, like I said, be planting about seven or 8,000 trees in those areas. All right, next slide. And then lastly, um, Sheboygan Marsh, we have three projects out there. The bypass gate replacement, if you recall, in 2018, it got stuck in the down position, so we had no water control structure out there. Um, so we haven't had a control structure out there since July 3rd, I believe, is when we finally got it out of 2018. Um, that should be installed next week. Um, the new dam, we have it currently listed in our five-year capital plan for 2023 construction. Uh, I think the county we have in there 1.4 and some change. We have a million dollar ask in at the DNR through their wildlife program. Um, from what I hear, that's looking pretty good so far, so we'll see on that. And then the Sheboygan County Conservation Association has pledged $100,000 of, of their funding uh, for the new dam. Uh, right now, we're trying to secure design dollars, so when we get to 2023, we can build it, that we have a design and approved plans in place. So. And then the new building, uh, Friends of the Marsh, uh, we're getting there. That's taken a while, too, uh, with the fundraising. But uh, right now, we're about 170000 short of the, the goal um, to begin construction. So uh, we're hopeful that we can start in 2020. Um, Tuesday night, we have a meeting with a potential donor. So hopefully, maybe next Tuesday this time, we'll, we'll have good news. So. So I guess any questions? That's a quick rundown of both properties. 
Thank you very much, Aaron. All right. Thank you. And thank you for all you did out there, especially with the Amsterdam Dunes. I just wanted to add real quickly, you know, that to me that was a perfect example of the Amsterdam Dunes project. Uh, Adam was involved, obviously. Aaron, uh, former chairman Roger Testrudi, uh, the finance committee, parade committee, executive committee, the board as a whole had a little bit of a leap of faith there with good information. And I think it was a perfect example of the type of collaboration that leads to good results. And I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Public addresses. There are none. Letters, communications, and announcements. There are two resolutions from the Outagamie County Board of Supervisors. The first one is supporting pending legislation correcting statute discrepancies de dealing with children in need of protection or CHIPS. Uh, we'll refer that to the Health and Human Services Committee. And the second one is supporting pending legislation known as Commitment to Veteran Support and Outreach Act. We'll also refer that one to the Health and Human Services Committee. That is all. Thank you, John. County Administrator's Report. Adam. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. You know, I appreciated Chairman Wagner's summary there as, as I reflect and look at this. And the, the current board is three more board meetings. You only have three more board meetings. And as we know, there's going to be a number of new faces uh, next term. And as Aaron walked through the Amsterdam Dunes Preservation Area Mitigation Bank, I mean, as, as Chairman Wagner said, what an accomplishment by this board in Sheboygan County. And I've said this to Aaron before, and I'll just say it publicly. I don't know if there is a planning and conservation director or a county board in the state that has a stronger track record right now of natural resource protection and enhancement. You took a leap of faith and purchased 333 acres of one of the last remaining undeveloped properties along Lake Michigan between here and Milwaukee. We garnered over $100 million to clean up the Sheboygan River and Harbor, to dredge it, working with the city of Sheboygan and others. Uh, we've purchased Gerber Lakes. We've done good work at the Sheboygan County Marsh. And if you talk about quality of life, we're one of the few counties in the country that invested over $25 million in our non-motorized transportation system. So whether you're a planning and conservation director and, and Aaron's team, or on the planning and conservation, the PRACOM committee, any member of this county board, without your support, these type of activities don't happen. And I see in the room this evening, we have a few guests who are running for county board. And, and I, I welcome you this evening, and I, I think it's a compliment to you that you're here to observe. And as I briefly shared when I, when I stopped back and, and, and chatted with you, it also is a reflection on this county board that decorum, professionalism, respect, thoughtfulness, working in collaboration, it's the culture that we have established. starts with Chairman Wagner and every former county board chairperson that's here this evening. It's a responsibility of all of us. And it's why I love working for Sheboygan County. We don't focus on D's and R's. We focus on problem solving and we have a really impressive track record of helping make good things happen. So I thank the county board for your, your work and your leadership. And, and when you see a presentation like that, or, you, or if you're going to be retiring soon or stepping off the board, I hope you reflect on all the good things that you've helped make happen, that you've been a part of. Thank you for that. A hundred years from now, folks are going to be walking Amsterdam dunes. And they're going to be thinking, wow. Somebody had some vision to protect this for future generations. Pretty cool. With any new board and new board members comes a lot of new learning. And um, we have our annual county board leadership forum. Uh, Vice Chairman Koch and Chairman Wagner and I have already been talking a little bit about the, the leadership forum. We want to focus more on orientation because we know we're going to have new faces on the county board. We already have some new faces on the county board with some appointments that have recently occurred. And there's always opportunities to learn. So at the, board, at the leadership forum, of course, we'll be looking at our fiscal outlook, challenges ahead, but we'll certainly be talking about Robert's rules of order 
and our just approach of collaboration and teamwork. I think our budget process, for example, is second to none. We have a very effective and collaborative budget process, and the longer I'm around, the more I'm hearing other counties who don't quite operate we do and don't have the success that we do in that regard. So it's, a, again, a credit to the board, and we want to make sure the new board members, the new supervisors, that they appreciate and recognize the approach we have there as well. Uh, the Wisconsin Counties Association does a fair amount of training. Most recently, Chairman or Vice Chairman Vern Koch and I and Supervisor Jerry Jorgensen, we attended a, a training session in Stevens Point, what was that, a couple of weeks ago, and thought it was very valuable, very well done. And coming up, and you may have already received this notification, uh, the 2020 County Officials Workshops, they refer to it as COWS. I, I don't know if I like the acronym so much, but... but it uh, is Wisconsin, Adam. It is yes, Wisconsin. Yes, yes, right, right. But I encourage you to think about it, whether you're a new board member or not. Uh, they'll have a number of dates and locations in May, and um, I'll be sure to share this if you don't receive it directly from the Wisconsin Counties Association. But the two closest are probably in Stevens Point and, and De Pere, Lake Geneva. That's on May 15th, May 18th, and May 20th. So you may just want to make a note or jot something on the calendar. And again, we'll get this information out to you. We received this, Chairman Wagner. Do you, I don't think the full board has received this. I don't know. This, I did. Right? They said more information to come. So this may have just been handed out to us at the policy exchange we were at. So I encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity. Certainly make sure that you attend our annual county board leadership forum. We've been doing it for 20 years. It's one of the secrets to our success attend the Wisconsin Counties Association conference in September, particularly new board members, a great opportunity. And the opportunity that Chairman Wagner, Vice Chairman Koch, and I just attended was the Wisconsin Counties Association Legislative Exchange, and I wanted to provide a brief update on that. It felt a little bit like Groundhog Day. We've been attending these for a while. It's generally the administrator, the chairperson, sometimes the vice chairperson. So the three of us had the opportunity to go this year. Mark O'Connell uh, started the session talking about population dynamics in the state of Wisconsin. And particularly rural areas are seeing their population decline and decline significantly. And you think about the pressure that puts on the tax base and maintaining services, particularly maintaining our transportation system. I don't know if you had a chance to review the article I forwarded on from uh, what the New York Inquirer or whatever it was. New York Times. New York Times. <laughs> That's got a better ring to it, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, they were talking about Trempolo County and that their, their turnaround time on taking care of their roads now is upwards of 70 years and how many counties are feeling this pressure. Thank goodness the Sheboygan County Board had the vision, the courage, the leadership to implement a half percent sales tax and have a sustainable funding source to maintain our transportation system. Thank goodness. And now we have other counties looking at us as a model to the fact that we not only are dedicating that to our transportation system, that we're providing property tax relief and we're sharing it with other local mun municipalities, the only county to do so. Pretty impressive. So. Mark set the stage, Executive Director Mark O'Connell, with some of the challenges, struggles that counties are having with population dynamics, with workforce. Uh, if any of you want to continue working into your 90s, we encourage it because there's a need out there. And I think of my kids who are all in their 20s now and any young people coming into the workforce, wow, are there opportunities out there for people. Uh, there's, a, there's a real need for workers. Sheboygan County, even with all of our focus with the Sheboygan County Economic Deve Development Corporation, all the strides we've made the last five, 10 years, we still have about 2,500 open positions right here in Sheboygan County. We received a legislative update from uh, Kyle Christensen, Sarah Deidre Kasdorf, Dan Barr, Marsha Rainbolt, folks that many of you probably have heard before or heard them speak at a WCA conference, and they're outstanding. WCA staff are outstanding. Uh, Kyle Christensen is just, 
I think he's a rock star. He does a wonderful job as legislative director. And if you've never met Sarah Deidre Kastorf, she's been with that association now for over 20 years, and she focuses a lot on health and human services. Incredibly knowledgeable. So they talked about a lot of things going on, or maybe not enough going on at the state level to problem solve, but we did discuss levy limits. And I can assure you no one is interested in raising property taxes. But if we're not going to raise property taxes, or if we're going to continue to have levy limits in place that really don't provide enough revenue for us to maintain our programs and services, we better be willing to look at alternative revenue streams. And you're starting to hear more focus about the sales tax, because as many of you may recall from our county board leadership forum, sales tax in Wisconsin is less than the surrounding states around us. And candidly, I think people find it a little bit more acceptable than the old property tax increase that comes right around Christmas time. It's considered to be one of the most despised taxes there are. So who wants to beat the drum to raise property taxes? We don't. And as you know, we've held the line very effectively for the last decade or more. But we're going to have to be willing to look at alternatives. Our legislators are going to have to be willing to look at alternatives. And as I shared at the legislative breakfast last week, Monday, for the board members who attended that, you understand the programs and services we have. You see the needs at Health and Human Services, whether it's children, people suffering from mental health, whatever it may be. If you aren't talking to our legislators and helping raise their awareness to the challenges we have and that we're just striving to maintain what we have in play, who's going to? So I think we're all going to have to contribute more to that discussion. The other topic they had was uh, juvenile corrections. We all heard a lot about that last couple of years. Now the state juvenile correctional facilities are did a poor job. And they were looking to blow it up and create four regional facilities. And they asked counties to step up. And there were a number of counties willing to do so, though when they looked at the the cost benefit of doing that and the risk involved, fewer and fewer counties step forward. Finally, we uh, reached some agreement in the state and now we have some reservation at the state level about providing sufficient funds. So it's all being delayed and um, it, it's, it's a challenge, it's an ongoing challenge. Governor Tony Evers attended the WCA Policy Exchange and as uh, former Chairman Bill Gehring knows and Roger Destruti, uh, you don't necessarily see the governor there every policy exchange, but he was there and it, uh, speaking about what they would like to do with the fund balance or the surplus that you've no doubt read about. I think it's a real credit to the state. Most of my career, the state's fiscal house has not been in order, which I've always felt strongly that doggone it, Sheboygan County's better be, and it is, but the state for over a decade has not had their fiscal house in order. And it's encouraging to see and reflects well on all involved that uh, right now the state's fiscal house is looking better. The rainy day fund is approaching one billion. So if we do see a downturn in the economy, which no doubt we will at some point, we've got some reserves there. Helps with the bond, bond rating, it's good all around. We had a legislative leadership roundtable. And that, as I see my friend Bill Gehring smiling back there, that does feel like Round Dog Day because you get these important leaders up there and Mark O'Connell does a nice job talking to them about you know what's hot and what are they focusing on and what can we do to problem solve. And so the majority and minority leaders were there. And honestly, it was really more about them really pointing fingers at one another about the lack of communication, the lack of maybe respect or courtesy and asking one another to get together to talk things through rather than just throw it out there and see what sticks. It's, it, to me, it felt like, I mean, with all due respect, because they have very, very challenging jobs, I can't imagine, not in their shoes, but it felt like there's some room for improvement there on on just how we communicate and treat one another. Andy Phillips, the attorney who represents Von Briesen and Roper and the Wisconsin Counties Association gave an update on the opioid 
uh, lawsuit that 71 of 72 counties have signed on with, including Sheboygan County. He also gave an update on Brown County and the fact that they're in the midst of a lawsuit on their half percent sales tax and whether or not for every dollar that is raised in sales tax revenue should we be reducing property tax levy the same dollar amount. Imagine if that was the ruling. Every county in the state that has a sales tax, and I believe about 65 of 72 do, would be in a world of hurt. and We'd need a legislative fix. So we're waiting on a court ruling with that. And then uh, finally, we had some Wisconsin Supreme Court candidates present there. And that always feels a little unique when they do that. But it's, it's educational to see the differences in their point of view. And so we got to get to know them a little bit better. So just a quick little recap on that. But I think it's a very valuable um, policy exchange. And it's a credit to our Wisconsin Counties Association staff and all involved. They do a nice job representing county government. The last thing I'd like to touch on is what's in your packet this evening. You have resolution number 21 authorizing indef indefeasible right of use agreement for the use of ring of fiber in infrastructure. That's quite a mouthful. Uh, essentially, it gives the exclusive right of a private entity to assist Sheboygan County and the other partners we have, the city of Sheboygan school and the uh, city of Sheboygan, and further improving upon our ring of fiber. For those of you who are a little new or wondering, well, what is this ring of fiber? Let me, let me very briefly share. In partnership with the city of Sheboygan and Sheboygan Area School District, Sheboygan County completed the construction of a 23-mile ring of fiber to the tune of $2.5 million in October of 2016. How quickly time flies, right? It was a real investment and a collaborative effort between the county the city of Sheboygan and the city of Sheboygan School District. The network replaces the aging and sometimes unreliable radio tower equipment that previously connected county facilities to the internet. The enhanced speed and reliability of the new network will support the construction of a disaster recovery and data backup site that is now in our detention center that was done in 2017. It vastly improves our overall security. It was just the right thing to do. And talk about a wonderful investment. This fiber that goes in the ground generally lasts, they say, for about 40 years, probably longer. Over the course of that time, we will completely pay back the investment that we made and have a far more reliable system. So what's happening with the resolution you have before you? Uh, Chris Lewinsky deserves credit, our IT director. He uh, sought requests for proposals. And we have an, a company, even though it's entitled Brown County, it's a, it's a private sector, third party company. And what they're doing is putting fiber in so we can hook up our transportation facility and Rocky Knoll. And in return, we're giving them some f lines that we aren't utilizing. So bottom line is because they're there, it's gonna benefit our overall organization and make sure that folks at Rocky Knoll, our employees there, and at the transportation facility are hooked up into the ring as well. It's a good thing. And it's a credit to Chris and all involved for seeing it through. With that, I'll conclude. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Adam. Next, uh, consideration of committee reports, executive committee, resolution number 20. Regarding carryover of unexpended 2019 appropriations to 2020, recommendations to adopt. Supervisor Gehring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move for adoption. Thank you, Supervisor Gehring. I need a second. Thank you, Supervisor Abler. Thank you, Supervisor Abler. Any uh, questions or comments? Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. Recommendations adopted unanimously. Thank you. Resolution number 21. Regarding authorizing indefeasible right of use agreement for use of ring and fiber infrastructure, recommendation to adopt. Supervisor Brower. Uh, I'd like to make the motion to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Brower. Supervisor Testrudi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Supervisor Testrudi. Any uh, questions or comments? 
Seeing no lights, please push your I or nay button. That motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Consideration of committee reports, law committee, ordinance number 10. Regarding establishing speed zone on County Road KK, Tana Wilson, recommendation to enact. Supervisor Glavin. Move to approve. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Are there any questions or comments on this um, ordinance? Seeing no lights, please push your aye or nay button. is approved unanimously. Thank you. I would like to note that I think that's the first uh, road change in speed that passed unanimously because if you all remember, <laughs> and I love the guy. He still calls me, by the way, just so you know, and we talk from time to time. He's a great guy. Supervisor Bemis, obviously, he was, that was not a fan of that, so just thought I'd mention it. I won't tell him that happened. Keep it quiet. Okay. Turn the gavel over to the vice chair. Resolutions introduced. Resolution number 22 from the Finance Committee. Regarding authorizing the issuance and sale of $4,750,000 general obligation promissory notes. Resolution number 22 will be sent to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 23 from the Finance Committee. Regarding adopting citizen participation plan. Resolution number 23 will be sent to the Executive Committee. Resolution number 24 from the Finance Committee. Regarding adopting policy to prohibit use of excessive force and barring entrances, exits for nonviolent civil rights demonstrations. Resolution number 24 will be sent to the Law Committee. Resolution number 25 from Planning, Resource, Agriculture, and Extension Committee. Regarding approving merger of lots one and two, plat of survey titled Lot 1, Shores of Amsterdam Dunes, Town of Holland. Resolution number 25 will be sent to the Executive Committee and resolution number 26 from Planning, Resource, Agriculture, and Extension Committee. Regarding requesting Wisconsin DNR Stewardship Local Assistance Grant. Resolution number 26 will be sent to the Finance Committee. There are no new ordinances. Supervisor Testrodi. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. I'll move to adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Supervisor Glavin. Second. Thank you, Supervisor Glavin. Please vote. We are adjourned.